Well, it is time to get that grill fired up for Father's Day. Uh, and our first guest today has the perfect slaw to go with everything. Give it up for our foodie queen, Stephanie Hansen. Okay, both our dads are dead, but if yours is alive, <laughs> You want to make him some Probably slaw. the best start to a segment ever. <laughs> you know. Welcome to our Father's Day segment. You're looking at two people whose alive, dads are dead. Yeah, yeah. Than yeah. Most. yeah. All right. Well, I thought, I know. It was kind of. But it's, it's a factual, it is factual. thing. We're yeah. factual here. We, yeah. we deal in facts. Uh huh. So we're making a slaw that you can serve with like grilled chicken, grilled salmon, grilled ribs, grilled meat, any of the proteins you want, or you can, I'll show you a different thing that we can do with it where you can serve it with no protein. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead. Do you know how to cut a cabbage? Cause you were making fun of me at the start of the show. Well, I think the studio audience is with me. I, I, I'm, I was making fun of you. I was making fun of you because it sounded like you were opening coconuts out here. I mean, so yeah, I, but I, I do don't know. What I do is I like go like this, and then I just thwack, thwack, thwack until it cuts through. We do have a chef in the audience, and he is horrified at my knife skills, and rightly so. I am a home chef. I've never had chef training. Perhaps that should be a segment that we do on the show. How yeah. about that? Okay, but what are you doing? So how I'm are you? I'm cutting out the core of the cabbage because when you cut red cabbage, which is how we're going to make our slaw, you don't really want that part. No. It's a little tough. It's not gonna like kill anybody. You can still eat it, but I just don't love it. Okay. So then I'm gonna cut this in like quarters because it makes it easier. And we're just gonna make really thin shreds. Okay. Notice my purple nail polish I wore for the occasion. You, I mean. Yeah, don't think, I don't think about you. You thought of everything. Okay, so we've got all of our slaw in here, right? We are going to add matchstick peppers, so it's gonna be real pretty. Peppers and coleslaw? Yes. Okay. It's delicious. Okay, I'm with you. I'm I'm gonna go. I shouldn't have said it like that. Oh, peppers and coleslaw. Cilantro. Yeah. Here's the secret ingredient, mint. You know how you have those Thai salads and they have such beautiful flavoring to them? Yeah. It's because of the mint. So we've got all of that in our bowl, and now we're gonna make our dressing. Okay. Now we're gonna just, I'm gonna, I have a measuring, but I like to eyeball. So we're gonna do four tablespoons of olive oil. Okay. Jason, do you ever use sesame oil? I do sometimes. I actually just made sesame broccoli. Oh, yum. Did yeah. you roast it and then have a little vinaigrette? Sure. <laughs> That's exactly what I did, Steph. Sesame oil smells just like sesame peanut butter. It's my oh, favorite thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that's going to give us a lot of flavor in that oil. We've got some rice wine vinegar. We're going to use about a quarter cup. Again, you need a lot Stephanie's of dressing. Guessing. Yeah. Okay. You need a lot of dressing on this slaw because it gets dry. Yeah, and you just want a lot of flavor. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to show you a weird little hack. You ready for it? I'm. I am Hanson ready. Hack. Hanson time. hack. Here we go. What are you doing? I need to use honey, so I'm just going to spray my bowl, and I need about three or four tablespoons of honey. So I'm just going to use my little honey boy here. I guess he's not a boy. He's a bear. Yeah. And he watch. could be a boy bear. It'll just slide right out. Oh, I need to put it in here. Almost made a fail. Oh, error. so the nonstick spray. Yeah, it helps it slide right out versus like it's stuck in your bowl. Oh, that's a nice little Hanson yeah. hack. Little Hanson hack. Yeah. OK, we're going to add a little soy sauce. Some grated clove or grated garlic, not clove. All right, here's how I do. You know my microplane. Yeah, Steph my loves her tool. microplane. Yeah. It's the tool of life. It is. We're gonna add a little ginger. Now I like to use fresh ginger, and you can microplane ginger too. I don't know if you know that, but it's very easy to do. Okay. So you'd freeze it, and then you can just leave it in the freezer. So whenever you need it, you just microplane a little hunk. Okay. So that's a good hack. That's a good okay, little hack. We're gonna do a little lemon ju or uh, lemon, little zest, lemon zest. Lime zest. Okay. Inside, you don't have to right in right in the. I'm just doing it right inside my salad here. Okay. Lime. I'm gonna zest yeah. the whole lime. I called it a lemon, didn't I? Thank yeah, you, lime. Ladies. Yeah. All right, and then watch this hack. Whoops. That's all right. Another hack, you guys. I just learned this trick. I have always been juicing my limes by putting this in the little cradle and going like that. Yeah. That's wrong. Mind blowing. You turn it upside down. Yeah. Why they make it look like you're supposed to set that in there, I don't know. But ready? Yeah. 
you get more juice by doing it the opposite way. Oh, I guess. Who knew? I had no idea. I actually did. I, I, you knew. Yeah, You're because impressive. I make a lot of, I make um, my own version of the skinny girl margarita. So we go through a lot of lines. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Yeah. I had no idea. Someone saw me do it on TikTok. Yeah. Okay, little red pepper flakes, little salt. I, I think we got everything all in here. I was going to say, the thing that takes the most time is the dressing, it looks like. And the just, you have to No, I'm not being, stuff. I'm just saying that that's the, okay, shake it up. Wow. Shake, 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 shake your booty. It's beautiful. Shake your booty. This is my Ow! friend, everybody. This we is my friend. Okay. okay. So here we go. We're just gonna dress our salad. Now I try to use half the dressing at first just to get it going a little bit. And then if it feels dry, I'll add more. Okay. Now, if your family likes edamame, if you want to add peas, let's say you are really excited about sesame seeds or wonton crisps. You could make this all different kinds of ways. I like edamame. I would absolutely put edamame. How about in that. mandarin oranges? Nope, don't. Some not a fan. Some people like nope. that. Not a fan. You're gonna top Too it sweet. With you know some what? Peanuts? Too sweet. I don't need what? Peanuts. I love peanuts you all could also day, use every day. Sunflower seeds. Okay. You could use any kind of nut you want. Cashews. Okay. You could use those spicy cashews with the sesame seeds on them from Trader Joe's. Because we want be texture. Good. Yeah, so that's it. But this salad, you guys, will sit all day. Like, so you'll put it in the refrigerator, but it's not gonna be weird with the mayonnaise. It's not gonna get all soggy. It literally holds up. I have served this five days after I've made it, and I still had a good hefty crunch. Oh. So it's great for large groups. If you're like having a cabin weekend, you make it on a Friday, you can still eat it on a Sunday. We have more with stuff. She's going to be answering your food questions a little bit later in the show. I'm going to try this and more. Stay with us back right after these messages. <laughs> Welcome back. We're here with my buddy Stephanie Hansen, and now uh, she's answering your questions in our Ask Stephanie segment. First up is Deb. Hi, Deb. She emailed us with this question. Hey, Stephanie, why does potato salad or anything else that uses mayo turn watery overnight? I have tried chilling potatoes, eggs, and onions overnight, and then adding mayo. Mer, thank you in advance. It, it is an inevitable fact that when you boil something in water, it's going to release that water when it sits overnight. So one thing you could try with potato salad is to steam the potatoes. There'd be a little less water content in there. That's hard to do with macaroni. So if you're doing like a macaroni salad, make sure you rely on the El Dante side of things because it's gonna absorb and release that water. And you know, a little water is fine. You can either dump it out or just stir it back in and it's fine. It doesn't mean that your salad's bad. It just means it's maybe a little watery. You can also put a little paper towel wad in there and like tip your your bowl oh. so that the water goes into the paper towel and then take that paper towel out, stir it up and serve it. Uh, that's that's not an official like No, thing, I like that though. No. It does work. Next up is Travis. What's up, Travis? Uh, Stephanie, the rhubarb is going insane in my garden. How long do I have to harvest it? I'm so glad you asked this question, Travis. You can, it's the best when you harvest it, re harvest it right away. And those red stalks are so fresh and juicy. But you can harvest rhubarb throughout the summer and you just wanna make sure that you're leaving a third of the plant intact. Because if you take more than that, it doesn't have enough energy to regrow for the next year. But we're still making, like I have three different patches I'm picking from. Cause you're harvesting your I own am, rhubarb. And I've made a ton of rhubarb syrup. We're making our rhubarb bars. I'm making rhubarb pies, rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. Yeah. <laughs> is it abundant? It is abundant. But I'm getting to the point now where I have to be careful of my patches cause I can't overpick them. Don't overpick your patch. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Great words to live by, Steph. That's right. <laughs> Listen to Aunt Steph, kids. Uh, Steph, ironically, asked Steph, um, I bought a ton of strawberries because they're so cheap right now. What are some easy and delicious ways to use them besides, besides strawberry pie? Okay, three things. Strawberry salads, just, you know, make a fresh strawberry salad, add a little mozzarella, a little goat cheese, some nuts, whatever your spring green is, toss it up, balsamic vinaigrette. Second thing, compote, take those strawberries, add sugar, put it in a, a skillet and let it get so that it releases its juices and then you can freeze that in one cup portions. So you have that for cheesecake desserts, you have that for ice cream, you have that for making fresh malts. 
you have it all year round. Oh, that's a really good idea. Okay, third thing. There was just a recipe in the New York Times that I was dying to try, and I'm hoping to maybe try it on the show still. It's you a can do whatever you want. drop biscuit for strawberry shortcake, but it has roasted strawberries in the biscuit batter. So should I make that and bring it on the show? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're gonna do that because it just, like who can resist a biscuit with like big chunks of strawberries sticking out of it and then you'd slice it with your whipped cream and your strawberry compote? Listen lady, there's only one person making biscuits on this show. <laughs> These are not your kind of biscuits. They're I drop don't, biscuits, yeah. I'm not good at your kind of biscuits because I do drop <laughs> biscuits. Yeah, so drop biscuits are yeah, very different. All right, I'm gonna do that. That's a good idea, but let me, can I give you advice on that one? Please. The same thing with the watery, the, you got to get rid of the moisture as much as you can out of the whatever you're mixing with the biscuit dough because it will affect the rise of the biscuit. Oh. Trust me when I say that. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's why this recipe I think is so cool because it roasts the yeah. strawberries. Yep, it's so a good that's idea. A tip. Next is Gerard. Hi, Gerard. Uh, hey, uh, Steph. I'm a single guy in my 30s. Uh, I no longer have roommates. <laughs> Steph, I think you're going to be asked out on a date here. Yeah, I might go out with him. I'm feeling bad for him. Yeah, I no longer have roommates, but now I'm faced with questions I've never had before. Like when I make spaghetti, I only use a third or half of the sauce. How long is the other half good for? Okay, two things. When you open your spaghetti, take the leftovers and just portion it out in however much you're going to use and then freeze that because you know I freeze everything. So you do. That's the start. But if you haven't frozen it, this is not a scientific answer, but tomato has a lot of acid in it. If there's no mold on the top, you can use it. And even if there is mold, I've scraped it off and used it too. Now, I have. I'm not a doctor and I'm not like advising you to do any unscientific things. You guys are moms ate everything. We had four kids. Our mom would scrape the cheese off and go, here kid, eat it. Right in front of us and we would. <laughs> I don't pay attention to sell by dates. I'm terrible about that. You come to my house, you're not going to get sick, I promise. Leo, take, Leo, take five, please. All emails to stephaniesdish.com. Yeah. No, I get it. Look, yeah. It's, it's an acidic based product. I know. I mean, I, it can go way longer than you think. I know. It just, I, we, I just talked about this. I'm a person who, even if it's a day past the expiration date, gone. Oh, you guys. It freaks those me are out. Those suggestions. They're not based in science. Don't say that out loud. It's true. Because my mom is with me. My mother-in-law will eat it until it grows a tail All and legs. Oh, did because they didn't have expiration dates I am dates not joking. Absolutely. Oh, oh, cheese will grow a tail and eyeballs, and she'll chop off the eyes and eat it. 100% no, I'm no, with your, no, your mother-in-law No, on that. I'm with my mom. Nope, it's gone. Yeah. Expiration date, out. Out. Love Stephanie, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> For all things Stephanie, go to stephaniesdish.com. We'll be right back, back in a moment.